everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is an exciting one. I have all five of the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. I'm super excited to be going over all of these. So we're going to be doing a lot in today's video. I'm going to be going over the details of each of these palettes, inserting in some swatches. I will be also inserting in this eye look that I have here, going over how I got this, and then just going over my final thoughts. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, but let's get started just opening these up and playing with them. All right, so just some details on these palettes as a whole. They do retail for 49 pounds, 58 euros and 68 US dollars. Now, if you live in the US, just a little fun fact, you are paying a little bit more, I'm sorry. 49 pounds roughly converts to 59 US dollars. I'm not sure why she made the price a little bit more. I don't know if there's cost factored into that, but it does not convert equally, just so you know. But each palette comes with six shades and there are six different finishes in each one. Here is what the component looks like and compared to the size of my hand. So it is fairly small. I mean, for six shades, that's what we would expect out of a palette and these feel really nice. I will be inserting in some swatches, but here is Vega up close here. And again, just my hand, so you can kind of just see the size comparison here. But the packaging feels really nice. It's not too plasticky. It's not metal, so it's not ultra luxe, ultra heavy but I still don't think it feels cheap by any means. And then I also just wanna show the box here. So it is a white carton, and then the back has the name as well as each shade with each ingredient on it. I really appreciate that. I haven't seen a lot of eyeshadow palettes that show that. So I really love the box. Not that I'm gonna keep the box, but for people who really love to know the ingredients in eyeshadows, it's very readily available for you if that's what you like. Lastly, these are all made in Italy, I believe. I don't think any of them are made anywhere else. At least Vega is made in Italy, so I'm assuming that's the same for all of them. And then it is 5.7 grams. So really exciting launch from Lisa Eldridge. I only picked up the eyeshadow palettes. I didn't pick up any of the lipsticks. I'm really just cutting myself off from lipsticks until I get through a little bit more of my collection, but I do have some of the Lisa Eldridge lipstick formulas, and I can vouch that if it's the same as her normal, typical formula, she has a fantastic lipstick formula, a fantastic lip pencil formula, so you can't go wrong with those if they are shades that you like. Personally, just for me, I'm giving myself a hard cut off on lip purchases. Now, before we get into each palette up close, insert in some swatches, I do just wanna say I wanted to put one generic video on all five of these eyeshadow palettes. So you can expect in the future that I'll be doing a video on each individual eyeshadow palette as well as multiple looks with each palette. So if there's a specific palette that you're more interested in, like if you just wanted to see looks with Muse or just with Vega, those videos are coming up. I'm gonna need a little bit of time doing three looks with each palette it takes a little bit of time to do, but that video is coming. I just at least first wanted to do more of a general video with swatches, details, all that good stuff, so you can see maybe which palette you are more interested in. But I'm gonna scoot over and let's go over each individual palette and the colors and swatches. Let's first start with Muse. So this is the more rosy hue one. Muse is a painterly washed world of romance from soft vintage pinks to warm plum brown tones that seamlessly blend together for a monochromatic look of rosy simplicity. This was inspired in part by the Belle Epoque with its painterly washed world of romance and by the sensuous smoky rosewood undertones of my Velvet Muse lip color. The shades in the Muse palette are Tea Room, which is a velvet, a soft pink apricot, Tomorrow's Party, a metallic burnished warm rose, Vintage Mulberry, a velvet deep plum brown, Love in Venice, which is a luminous finish, rose gold. Sheribum, which is a velvet, don't know if I'm saying that right, it's a muted clay pink. And then Taffeta Fan, which is a luster formula, delicate pearly champagne. 
Now, next up, let's go to Sorcery. This is the only one on the Lisa Aldridge site that's currently sold out, which was actually very surprising to me. But this one is inspired by medieval tales and legends. Sorcery is a story of magicians, fairs, and fantasy of the Middle Ages. And the six shades that we have in this palette are Troubadour, which is a seamless matte, deep inky teal, Grotto, which is a metallic, rich emerald green, Madrigal, metallic, a blackened antique green gold, Mercurial, a luminous finish, a prismatic green to heather duochrome, Mage, a metallic, pale, silvery, sage green gray with icy blue, pink, gold, and green pearls, and then Swan Song, a metallic, rich sapphire blue. So that is all the shades in the Sorcery palette. Let's now go to the Myth palette. Now, the Myth palette was the one that I was most excited for. I love purple colors, especially purple with those gray tones. So this palette takes its inspiration from the Mauve Decade in Victorian Gothic hues. And the shades we have in this palette are Nocturama, which is a velvet, deep black and violet, Illusionism, a top coat, transparent base with ultraviolet, sparkly pearls, Mob Decade, a velvet, muted gray lavender, faded amethyst, a metallic, smoked and lustrous taupey amethyst, right up my alley, Victorian trim, velvet, rich and bright, vibrant mulberry, and Violet Stone, a velvet, which is a pure violet. Let's now talk about Cinnabar. Honestly, this was probably my least favorite out of the five. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I am not a super big fan of warm tones, but I still wanted to give this one a shot because it didn't look too fiery orange. Kind of still had those peachy tones in it, so I decided to still give it a shot. There wasn't any point in getting four out of the five. I just figured get all five because you can switch out any of the shades in the palette. They do all have little pinholes. So if I wanted to swap them out, I can, which I really appreciate about these palettes. But the Cinnabar palette is a rich composition of warm base shades that delivers a myriad of looks from light caramel to intense, deep, earthy browns and lustrous bronze. And the six shades we have are Raw Sienna, which is a seamless matte, a light caramel color, Bronzite, a metallic, rich warm bronze, fired earth, a seamless matte, deep warm earth brown, lost summer, a metallic, which is warm copper, deep ochre, velvet, rich earthy brown, and ritual, which is a top coat, soft light gold with warm sparkling pearls. And lastly, we have Vega. This was my second favorite Inspired by the graphic, optical artistry and illusionism and the infinite nature of the galaxy, this palette offers never-ending possibilities to sculpt and shine. The six shades that we have in the Vega palette are French Gray, which is a velvet, light neutral stone, Smoke and Mirrors, a seamless matte, medium deep cool gray slate, Moon Swirl, a metallic cool silvery mink taupe, Turbulence, a seamless matte, cool medium brown, supernova, a luminous finish, silver with rose pink and silver sparkles, and lastly, lamp black, a seamless matte, which is a true black. So that wraps up the details and swatches of these five palettes, just going over each of the shades and the finishes. Now I want to insert in a clip here of me doing this eye look, and I'm just going to briefly go over how I got this eye look. I did use three of the palettes. I used Vega, Myth, and Muse, but let's just get started talking about that. So I really didn't do anything fancy with this eye look. First, I just took Tea Room from the Muse palette, and I used a Ruffer 15 to just put that all over my crease and my lid here, just really blending that everywhere. And then I also just took that same shade Tea Room and blended it on my lower lash line, poked myself in the eye, which is always fun. Afterwards, I took a Ruffer 14, went into the Vega shade and used the French gray shade to just kind of contour my lid a little bit and add some definition. I have slightly hooded eyes, so I kind of just like to define my crease as much as I can. And I'm really just trying to build that shade up. It was taking a little bit of work to build that up. You can see I really had to layer that shade. It was a lot lighter than I was anticipating. 
And then because of that, I ended up going back into the Myth palette and taking that Nocturama shade with a Refer 13. It's just a little bit smaller. It's kind of like a very, very dark purple and really just defining that crease even more, that outer V there, because I just wasn't getting the depth that I was looking for. And it's a very blendable violet. I actually thought that it was a black. It's so deep, but it really gave a nice depthness to the eye look that I was looking for. And then afterwards, I went back into that tea room shade and just kind of blended it out. Wanted to make that top part a little bit more seamless. Then going back in with that French gray, just layering, really trying to tone down that Nocturna shade while still keeping the depthness there. And then finally, the fun part, the glitter. So I'm taking Illusionism from the Myth and just going on that inner third of my lid there. And I'm gonna be layering some finishes here. So I'm also taking Supernova from the Vega palette, which is what you see there. And that's a little bit more opaque. So I'm going more over the lid with that, especially the middle and outer third. And then I'm going back in with Illusionism. You're gonna see me switching back and forth and just kind of blending those two shades. But I really wanted Illusionism more on the inner corner and Supernova more on the middle outer third. So I'm just blending those two shades back and forth. And then I took that dark shade, that Nocturama shade, going back in on my lower lash line to just connect the two, try not to poke my eye out. Also lining my top lid with that, very gently with an angled brush, and going in with my Rare Beauty Mascara to just finish off the look here. And that's really all I did. I love how this look turned out. It has that cool element to it. It has a purple element to it. I had a little bit of that rosy tone from Tea Room to just match the rosy in my shirt here, and it's a completely me look. Now that we've gone over the eye look and the swatches, let's go over my final thoughts here. So first off, I mean, these are expensive palettes. I basically spent my entire holiday budget on these palettes. I will not deny these are very expensive. It's going to completely depend on what you're looking for if the price point is worth it to you. I do love the versatility of these palettes. I love that they're small, they're six pan. They have these little hole punches here where you can take the shadows out and rearrange them. And it's very easy to do. I just tried it now. So I just took a bobby pin and poked it in the back here, right like this. And then it just pops out. So they do come out very easily. And I love that Lisa Eldridge thought of that. I love that as a makeup artist, she really considered people that, you know, I'm not going to go through this black probably ever. However, I might go through this transition shade or I might go through this top coat or metallic shade or whichever one, luminous finish, I don't remember off the top of my head. But those shades I might go through and I can just buy the refill if I want to rather than having to buy a whole new palette at $68. So I really appreciate that aspect of it. That is partly what pushed me over the edge to purchase these palettes, if I'm quite honest with you, because I like that I can switch them around if I wanted to. Now, as far as the formula, even though I used three of the five palettes, I didn't use two formulas. So I didn't use a metallic and I didn't use a seamless matte. So I can't speak on those specific formulas. However, the other formulas worked great. The luminous finish was awesome. The top coat was beautiful. Love those kinds of shades. And then the velvet formula, kind of like a creamy matte, I wanna say. It was good, I liked it a lot. It worked great with the refer brushes. However, they kind of lacked the depthness that I was expecting out of the palette, specifically the French gray shade. I just was expecting that shade to be so much darker than it was on my eye. And knowing Lisa Eldridge, she spends a lot of time, at least I feel like, making sure that there's a great representation of the shades on her website. 
on different skin tones. And she makes sure to put the foundation shade that the person's wearing as well as swatches on just a lot of different skin tones. I really appreciate that about her. I can only speak on my skin tone, but that French gray shade was just a lot lighter. And I'm interested to see some reviews of people with deeper complexions and how some of these shades show up because even that tea room shade was just a lot lighter than I was expecting it to be. Now that is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that whatsoever because I like that kind of formula. I really like the look that I came up with. I feel like it's very versatile. I feel very daytime, elegant, appropriate right now, but I would also feel very confident like if my boyfriend was randomly to be like, let's go out to a fancy dinner. Like I would feel like my makeup's already great. I don't need to go like a day to night situation. Like I feel like this eye look is perfect for both of those occasions and I really love that. Now I don't want to eat my words completely until I try all these palettes because specifically like the Sorcery palette looks like it has some really deep, rich, beautiful shades. I'm really excited to play with that one specifically because if you saw my Bobbi Brown review of the Jade Stone palette, I'll link that video above, but spoiler alert, it was a complete fail. I tried to do a green smoky eye and I could not get it to work. The fallout was just dismal. It's 90% of why I picked up the Sorcery palette is so I can retry doing that green smoky eye because I really want to do that for like a holiday event, like this beautiful, gorgeous green smoky eye. And I'm hoping the Sorcery palette gives that to me. So that one looks like it has a lot more depthness to it. And it could just be the shades that I chose don't have that depthness to it, but I am a little bit like 10% weary of how these shades will translate on other skin tones other than my own. Other than that though, if you're a person who loves simple makeup, easy makeup, just blends itself makeup, these are the palettes for you. I would really just sit and consider which palette is best for you if budget is an issue. I'm hoping in the future she comes out with just empty palettes that you can kind of pick and choose your own shades to kind of customize your own palette. She currently doesn't have that. She does have refill pans already, just not an empty palette. You could get a Z palette if you wanted to, but it would be nice to also have the component. So you could also go that route if she decides to come out with that in the future. But if you're a person who loves color, who loves pigment, who loves just bright in your face eyeshadow looks, I don't think that these are gonna be the palettes for you. They're very beautiful. The topper shades, metallic shades, they speak for themselves. They're just that understated elegance that I personally love. It's very much giving me Tom Ford vibes, all those richness quads that he has and comes out with. A lot of people did say that they thought of the Wayne Goss palettes once they saw these. However, I don't have any of the Wayne Goss palettes, so I can't really speak on that. For me, it just instantly reminded of the simplicity and elegance of a Tom Ford quad. That's what I thought of. And these are a little bit less expensive than Tom Ford. So that is a plus if you're looking at it that way and trying to find some sort of silver lining. But that's really just my opinion on these. I think that once reviews start rolling out, there are going to be people who either love these or hate these. I think it's going to be a very polarizing opinion. I don't think there's going to be very much down the middle of the road on these. It's just going to be one type of person loves these kinds of looks, loves these kinds of tones and palettes, and the other person just loves like those indie brands, those high shine metallics that you can only get from an indie company. And if that's what you're looking for, these are definitely not for you. And I'm interested to see what other people have to say. I am gonna wrap this video up here though. Again, I just kinda wanted to do a simple, short, sweet, to the point video on the details of these, a quick eye look, some swatches, so you can see a little bit more on each of these palettes. And soon I will be doing individual videos on each palette so that way you can see more of an in-depth review, more eye look inspiration. So keep an eye out, keep your notifications turned on so you'll be notified when those videos come up. But I'm gonna wrap it up here and I will see you all in my next video. Bye everyone.